Jeffrey Mondrain. I live in New York City and teach at Hunter College. I'm Nicholas Cripple. I live in Philadelphia and teach at Tyler School of Art. I have two separate parts to my work. One is I've been doing, with Nick, often site-specific work in spiritual spaces. Uh, it's great fun going into these absolutely gorgeous, you know, Gothic cathedrals and synagogues and then trying to devise work that fits into the content of whatever we're exhibiting. And we've been doing these site projects in uh, the United States and Europe now for about 12 years. I think we've done about 16 or 17 different yeah. sites. So it's been very exciting. The other part of my work is more as discrete uh, sculptural objects. And most of my forms are, are kind of within this sense of sensibility of being minimal. Very simple, recognizable forms. I do things like I sometimes attempt to sculpt sound. There's also a lot of science in my work. I use recognizable forms like pillows and plumb bobs and uh, a variety of things. And then I sort of visually reduce them down. Yeah, I also work in a couple different directions and I feel like even though they might be extremes from one to the other that there's always some connection between them. So when I'm doing the site work, I'm really interested in the iconography of the space, how it's expressed through the architectural ornamentation, um, how it may be co-opted by, by one religion layering something on top of another on top of another. Uh, and then the research for that often generates ideas for more separate discrete sculpture that occurs outside the installation. So I'm really interested in architecture, the interface of architecture, design, sacred geometry, a whole body of things. Well, this is my, uh, my second residency at the Museum of Glass. I did one about five or six years ago. And uh, I first started getting into glass. My younger brother, James Mongrain, who uh, that works for Dale Chihuly, makes beautiful goblets. Most people in the glass world know him. Uh, Jim and I started trying to learn glass together about 20 some years ago. And he has, of course, become this, uh, I would say, this sort of glass star. Uh, what I'm planning to do with this, this residency, because I knew I was going to be working with Jim, and he's so renowned for these gorgeous goblets he makes, I sort of conceptually found a project that had a parallel to that. So what I've done is I found about 35 paintings from the 15th, 16th century of the Last Supper. And all these paintings have that chalice on them, typically known as the Holy Grail. And so I've collected these paintings, made details, and my hope is that I'm going to have Jim blow them during the residency in a really sort of nice blood red uh, transparent glass. So what I plan to do here is really use the time for sort of research and development and get back into familiarizing myself with what I can actually do with the forms I'm using with glass. This one's quite elaborate. It probably was beaten into a, a cast form, like a cast iron form that made this mold. And then this one is a little bit more commercial, I think. But I would guess this one is early 1900s and this one is maybe like 1920, 1930. And then this is a kind of a 1950s jello mold. You know, those cop pink copper ones that you see hanging in people's kitchens. And it's got that very sort of 1950s modernist look to it. And then down here, is a 2009 William Sonoma bunt cake mold that's called Cathedral. And so I'm going to hopefully create some very playful little experiments with collaging, assembling, mirroring as a, as a step towards something larger down the road. Looks like we got plenty of thickness there, too. Let's get a little thicker there. Wow, look at that. Pretty cool. Excellent. Well, I just would like to say thank you to the museum for providing this opportunity to artists, particularly I think artists who don't normally work with this media, but are interested in seeing what they could do with it, because it's, it's a great opportunity to be able to have that time outside of your own studio space, and it also really sort of challenges you and shakes up your sort of uh, conventions 
makes you think a little bit differently about where you can do. You know, yeah, and I'd like to thank too the, the guys who are here making the work. Absolutely. We're in this luxurious position of being able to direct and come with ideas and you guys put it together and, and make it happen. It's Absolutely. What, what a luxury. It's, we're so fortunate to be able, able to do this. So thank you.